Hello everybody, Retro Beard here. It's um, time for our weekly Q&A session. I know I didn't do last weekend because um, I wasn't very well, as, as you know, but um, I thought this week I'd do a bumper um, edition with six questions rather than three and a little bit of chit chat. And I may even show off a few of my recent game purchases like I used to in the good old days of um, retro ramblings. I don't know if anybody here still remembers that series, but I thought to make it into a special for my sort of um, my return, I'd do that. Hopefully that's your sort of thing. Um, before I get started, and say if you do enjoy my content, can you please like, subscribe, share, click the notification bell, leave me a comment. It really helps the channel out and it's nice to keep on growing and um, keep enabling, enabling the channel to survive and thrive. With all that lot said, let's get into the um, Q&A. Um, let's get my phone because it enables me to see the questions because I cannot remember questions. The first question is... Andy Davidson asks about my experience of getting married and why it matters to us. Well, um, Andy, um, I'll answer this as best as I can, like I always do, because like I said, I don't, I don't have ever pre-prepare for these questions with answers, so that's why sometimes they're a bit gappy and a bit incomplete, but I like to try and keep it real, as I've said many times. Um, my experience of getting married, well, we uh, we had a pretty quiet marriage um, in a nice little chapel type place, um, a little bit of close family, not many people. We were quite quiet and private people. And we've got a story behind us, which um, is a bit big for this, um, this video. Um, but basically, it was the usual thing and um, very nice and intimate. And, and um, yeah, it went well. And then we went straight to Stratford and Avon for that holiday. If you remember the videos that I put up to say hello to everybody and to tell everyone. Um, why it matters to us. I've probably not got anything tremendously original to say, but we've been together for over five years. And, you know, without trying to sound pathetic or too, like, self-pitying, both of us have had a, quite a hard journey and a hard story. We've been for a lot. And, I, and my wife is a big believer in marriage um, she makes her feel like things are proper and I'm sure she's not alone and at me I wasn't I'd been married before and it it got very ugly in the end and for quite a long time after it got ugly and um, let's just say I was shy of it but then I got to the point where I thought we've been together all these years we've been through hell together and we've got closer and closer we've stood by each other we've helped each other we've healed each other and I thought if I can't commit to this if I can't commit to her, and if I can't commit to us, what am I going to commit to? What am I waiting for? What is going to come along that I can commit to that's bigger and better than this? And, and, and the answer was nothing. So I gave myself a little bit of char character building and counselling, and, um, and she never convinced me. She never tried getting me into it. It was just something she wanted to do. But she respected my thoughts and decisions. And I and I, I realised, I came round, and I'm so glad I did. Because a man who's not committed to anything struggles to be a man at all, in my view. And, and if anybody listening to this isn't committed to anything from their point of view, I don't mean necessarily marriage. I mean, you can be committed to anything. You can be committed to your career. You can be committed to your family, your mum, your brother, your kids, your, your um, even your hobby and all the community in it. You can be committed to anything. So I'm not saying marriage is the only commitment. I'm saying, but a man who's got nothing he's committed to, nothing he believes in or follows, he's lost. Like a, a lordless samurai, a ronin, you know, you're nothing if you've not got a cause. And I'm lucky enough to have been given, a, I suppose, a second chance in having a cause. Maybe a third chance, you could say, depends on your opinion. And um, in my uh, younger years, without going into it all again, once again, I mean, I... I made, like we've talked in the, in the streams and stuff, I've made a few mistakes and some of it was not my doing, but I didn't react to it in the way that I would react now, being a far calmer, um, I think I'm a better person. I can still be taken aback and shocked and not know what to say and do, but I don't react with counteractions and um, like, how do I say it without going too much into it? 
for example, in my 30s, early 30s, mid 30s even, if I was hurt or stressed, I'd go and post it all on Facebook like a drama drama queen. I don't know, I'm assuming that's an acceptable phrase or figure of speech. If it's not, I apologise. And then um, it made me feel justice because there was injustice and people knew my side. And really, it was just making things worse. I was just putting fuel on the fire and speeding up my own demise and my own... Um, my own self-fulfilling prophecy, let's just say. I know this is vague, but you can always ask questions and I will go into it as much as I can. Um, so, yeah, fundamentally, without babbling on for much longer on the question, if I couldn't commit to this, what the heck could I commit to? So, cheers, Andy, great question. Sorry for the very long answer. Next question. <coughs> Especially when it stays on the page. He um, Henrik Howmedal asks, if someone offered me a two-way trip in a time machine, what time period would I visit? Oh, Henrik, you sure ask some um, amazing questions, my friend. You really do. Um, some of your questions I've not got to yet because I'm not entirely sure what they mean. So I need to do a little bit of... Without without um, preparing an answer, I at least need to go and understand the question better. But this question, yeah, history and stuff in a time machine. So... Um, I'm going to say a disclaimer. Whatever I, whatever I answer, I'll probably change my mind later. I always reserve the right to change my mind in life, and I think we all should. It doesn't mean we're fickle. It means as we learn more facts and we change, you know, views shouldn't be set in stone. We're not static creatures. We're creatures forever in motion. Some of us more than others, of course. Um, but to answer it now, oh, I don't know. I'd be quite tempted to go back and see Jesus. Because, oh my God, I mean, you know... I don't need to really go into why. Um, but then again, to see the construction of the pyramids would be quite magnificent. Or to go to Samaria, the first major human civilization that we know of, 6000 BC. Uh, many of the Bible stories, like the floods with Noah and stuff, um, come from original tales they discovered on tablets from Samaria. There was a great flood that wiped out a lot of their civilization. They were also the one with the, where they discovered the tablets and statues of gods and people with wristwatches and UFOs coming down on the sky and stuff and they knew fit they knew things that civilization that they shouldn't know in a relatively short amount of time like they learned about the stars and the planets without any way of seeing them for instance they learned irrigation and they invented writing metallurgy um minor surgery and stuff um but then again there's other moments you know oh as a believer, I'm not I'm not a member of a church, I'm not I'm not even baptized, but as a believer of God in my own way, seeing Jesus would be pretty cool. Then again, going back and seeing Abraham and Moses and all that, I mean Oh bloody hell Henrik, you've got me here, my friend. But then again, going back in dinosaurs, seeing dinosaurs would be quite a mind blower. Um oh. I'm very bad at giving one answer, as you might have noticed. Probably go back and see um, Jesus in the time of Jesus, and um, of course he'd see right through me as a time traveller, I know, but you know, just to pay my respects, and um, yeah. Great question, Henrik. Thank you very much, my friend. Keep the questions coming. The next question. Old Crankman asks, what camper would I want to live in? Well, Old Crankman, um, before I answer that, and I haven't done research, um, British English and American English, because I believe you're American, aren't you, have um, different meanings for the same word, slight nudges. Camper here could mean a van that's either been converted into a little home on wheels, or it can mean a little van that already was a, little, a, a home on wheels, or a big van. But also, I've heard the odd person call a caravan a camper, which a caravan is like a static or mobile miniature house on wheels that you can put on the back of a car and take places. So, um, I'm going to assume it's like a large car or a van that you can live in, like, uh, like what I believe Americans call a Winnebago, that type of thing. That's what I'm going to interpret your context as. And in that case, I don't know many brands, but I would like something that's comfortable, as fuel efficient as possible, solar panels on it so that it doesn't need as much dependency on um, electric. Um, 
Not too big, because my country does not have your huge roads and places. Britain is a much more compacted country. Um, modern, insulated. So rather than a brand, I guess features. Um, and some kind of water system on board, because dealing with all that, I mean, I'm just not very experienced with that way of living, to be honest, so probably a question more relevant to people who live in, like, a rural situation, or, you know, I don't live tremendously rural, so, I mean, I live, I live, yes, I live in the countryside, but it's not what you'd call the countryside, my friend, I've been to America, you know, I, I spent a time out there, so I know that it's completely different, um, yeah, so something like that, great question, my friend, it's, sorry I didn't answer it as specifically as you would like but I've done my best as a person who's not from camper um, backgrounds so yep next question the great Chris Payne asks are there any retro games left that I would want to play and on what system <laughs> that's a good question mate um, there's loads of retro games I'd like to play on loads of systems but I will try and pick out a few um, and then we can see if I can commit to one. So, you know, commitment isn't my best thing, but you know. Um, I'd like to play Chrono Trigger on the DS. I've been after a copy for a long, long time, but the prices are freaking insane. £100 at least, usually. Sometimes there's a bargain for £85, but that's not a bargain to my bank balance. Um, I've. Yeah, that's one. Um, what else? Um, quite a few JRPGs on um, the Switch and the PlayStation 3 and, and the 3DS. I'm trying to think of specific titles because I realise you're asking me to just say something particular. What changed a lot of the answers to that question is my emulation setup I've got now. Because I'm managing to get my hands on games that I'd wanted to play for years and get them easily. Whereas before, our answer would have been limited to physical, wouldn't it? Um, uh, I bet after I finish the video, I will be like, Oh, this one, that one. But, you know, that's the name of the game, isn't it? Well, I guess, I guess I've given one answer, um, which I am doing something about it. I'm seeking a Japanese copy because um, Japanese copies are half the price or less. And Japanese copies... A fairly, not little known fact, but a little ish known fact is Japanese copies of Chrono Trigger on the DS also have English language on there, so you can um, do, it like, do it that way, which is really awesome. Um, damn it, there are quite a few, my friend. Oh, there was one I wanted. I wanted two copies of the PlayStation 1. Um, it's a game where you drive a taxi. And you can play it link up mode on two PlayStation 1s and two TVs and two copies of the game. One drives a taxi, one uses the weapons. Um, and you'd go around doing taxi missions in a post-apocalyptic future. But I cannot bloody remember the name, which don't help. I mean, I can easily rediscover it, but... Um, no, I can't remember the name. And I wouldn't mind Twisted Metal 2 and 3. Um, and probably 1. Because they've got link up modes, I believe. I do love me some Twisted Metal. Um, so yeah, but... Numero uno, um, either that taxi game or um, Chrono Trigger. Great question, my friend. Sorry for the gappy answer, but you wouldn't expect anything less from me, would you? I think this is the last question now. Let's have a look. Um, ah. No, it's not the last question. I'm wrong. Cauldron of Stardust asks, if I was going into battle pre-Gunpowder era, what weapon and defence would I take? Amazing question, Cauldron. Straight up my alley, the kind of scenario I like. Um, now, weapon, I would have a selection, because a great warrior, or, or even a not so great warrior, doesn't have to have just one weapon. I would have probably a Zweihander blade, um, which it goes under numerous other names, but like a Doppel, Doppel Hunder or something. It's basically a massive sword. It's not a great sword, it's one size above. It's um, about as long as I am tall. Um, and it's a great weapon because it's got, it's well guarded, it's also got on the blade, um, like a point, kind of a crescent shape in the, you know, in the middle of the blade, goes out, and then if you want to, you can hold it by the handle and on the blade where it's not 
but before this crescent shape, it, the blade's not sharp, so you can hold it there and hold it in the handle and use it as a spear. Because of the length, it's a fully length spear, or you can use it as a great weapon and do great swinging arcs with it and obviously cleave down people like they're nothing. It's an exhausting weapon, but it is a weapon that can defeat many others. Um, the only disadvantage is somebody's fast might get in, but if you get those strikes in, anybody's going down, even people in plate armour would feel it, or you could use it as a spear and go through the gaps in the plate armour. So it's a multi-purpose weapon that can take on halberds, swords, axes. Um, it could hold its own possibly against pikemen. It's yeah, a fantastic weapon. Um, sadly, you can't wear it. Yeah, sadly, because it's because of the size, you can't have it on your back. You've got to carry it over your shoulder when you march to places. You've perhaps seen the um, in the medieval pictures some of the um, Swiss soldiers using them and stuff. Some of the Swiss mercenaries, but it's an amazing sword and it's great to be a one-man army. There's tales of men on bridges holding off entire forces on the bridges, swinging them in great cleaving arcs, and men dropping like wheat. So that'd be my primary attack weapon. Um, probably as my backup weapon would be a rapier, because it's got arguably the best handguard of any weapon in the world. It's fast, it's got a good reach, and it's lethal. So probably when, when I, you know, if I lost my weapon or I got tired or whatever, then probably I'd pull my rapier out and do a bit of the old um, musketeers. So <laughs> yeah, um, perhaps I'd either have a rapier alongside a parrying dagger. Or maybe a rapier and a buckle of shield. I'd see how I would feel. Because the parrier dagger looks awesome. But the um, buckler is probably more protective. Um, armour wise. For my defence. My true defence. I wouldn't have full plate. Because being an independent guy. And being a guy who likes to be not caught off guard. Having armour that takes about 15 to 45 minutes to put on. And any any helpers. Doesn't suit me. So I'd rather have my own. Um, my own armour like. Perhaps um, chainmail, a chainmail suit, or I quite like um, a breastplate or the Roman um, banded armor. I can't think of the name of it. Um, Lor Lorica. I can't think of the name. But yeah, um, and probably yeah, some chainmail or a brigandine or something. But some sort of medium armor you know, upper and just probably, um, or even a good scale mail coat or something, but yeah, with some sort of chain mail, um, pants, tra you know, as in trousers, um, helmet wise, like a helm, because obviously I can pick any setup I want for this, I'd probably want something fairly enclosed, um, so at least, at least, um, my face is protected, um, so yeah, some, probably something like what the Templars wore or something, you know, like a good salt and pepper head, um, so yeah. Great question, um, Cauldron. Sorry if I've answered it a bit strangely, but it's a, it's a, it's a lot to um, think about. Cheers, mate. Next question. The last question, in fact. Karaoke Bloke asks, What was my best Christmas present? Now, I'm going to assume you mean in my childhood, because Christmases in my adulthood haven't been great. Some of that's my fault, some of that's life. Um, that's good. Yeah, I had a lot of good Christmases. I remember absolutely having a serious um, state of bliss when me and my uh, brother got a shared present one Christmas, which was a Sinclair Spectrum plus something, plus two or something, or plus three, 128k RAM, um, and we had the light gun package that came with a load of light gun games like Operation Wolf and stuff like that, um, and we had a massive uh, Christmas just gaming on it. Um, playing light gun games and our 21 inch CRT in the living room and that was mental and the, and, and the 1 to 8k I mean fundamentally all it really achieved was it added nicer music to the games but it was a cool upgrade at the time because you know it was a more simple time we had a great time on that but there's something else I used to do in my childhood at Christmases that made it magical and this was several Christmases many Christmases we used to always get together as a family and play Space Crusade and Hero Quest and that was beautiful and I don't, I don't know why we never played it any other time of the year we'd only played it Christmas but yeah but the Spectrum was magnificent. Once again, I could probably think of a dozen other great Christmases, but yeah, that was one of the finest moments. So um, yeah, that's all the questions done. Now I'm going to show you guys as a bonus to make it up for you not in last week, um, my recent purchases, because I've been a naughty boy as usual. I got 
Tale of Graces F on the PlayStation 3, a JRPG in the Tales of series. Pretty awesome game, starting to go up in price. I got a really good deal. It's an amazing game. It's got the best combat of all the Tales of games, so put that one down. Um, Fantasy Life on the 3DS, which would have been one of the, which would have been my answer to um, Chris's question, but I've, I own it, so I can't really use that as the example. It's arguably the greatest game on the 3DS, very arguably. So I got a really good price on that. Diablo 3 on the Switch Eternal Collection, so it's pretty cool. Got a good price on that, because this is going up. I mean, sometimes people are selling these for 80 quid, and I got this for nowhere near that. Got a really good price on it, so I'm pretty chuffed about that. I do love Diablo 3. I also own it on the PlayStation 3, on the Xbox One, and this now. So I've got it on three different consoles, so I'm a seller. And a game, and my last purchase recent is a game I've wanted for flipping well, for quite a while now. I've been playing it in stream quite a bit. People know I love it who watch my streams. Plants vs. Zombies on the DS. I got this for about £11, including delivery, which is a really good deal. This normally, even at bargain price, is £12, and sometimes much more, than it is, and it's only going to go up, so I am chuffed. So, that's me um, done. I've done this in one take, so I'm pretty chuffed with myself. Um, I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. Um, I'm going to see how I go with the format for this video series, because I quite enjoyed the flexibility of doing it when I had time, so I'm probably not going to do it as the premiere in the morning, and most people aren't around to watch it anyway, so the premiere was just an experiment, so we shall see. Um... Have a great week, yeah, have a great weekend, everybody. Take care of yourselves. Um, I'll be seeing you all soon. Oh, I got one more purchase I want to show you. Excuse me, I'm being a real professional now, going off screen. Advantage of our small British houses, eh? I can just grab it. I got this for 3 99 a Thanos light. What do you think of that? I got it from the bargain shop near where I live. I love Thanos. He's such a dude. Not bad for £3.99. Normally he's about 15 quid. <coughs> Excuse me. So, with that said, I'm going to go. Have an awesome time. Take care of yourselves. This is Retrobeard signing off. See you on Sunday at 5pm GMT UK time for the stream. Bye. Thanks very much, guys. See ya.